Uh, we also, incidentally, note, and I don't think anyone else has mentioned this, there is, behind the scenes, uh, building up and being built up quite deliberately uh, a future war against Iran on behalf of American interests, oil in interests and so on. And we specify not only would we bring our boys and girls back from Afghanistan, we will also resolutely refuse and will absolutely oppose any attempt to involve British troops in a war in or against Iran. It's none of this country's business and we shouldn't go down that road. Beyond that, the overall theme, as is reflected by the cover really, with two cranes uh, overlooking uh, Westminster and Big Ben, is this is about rebuilding Britain. The main thrust of this manifesto is about the economy. The immigration section is eight pages long. The section on the economy is 16 pages long. That's out of 76 main sections. When you add in agriculture, transport, and energy and other six pages which are clearly very very t closely tied to the economy it's 24 pages out of 76 that's a reflection of our view that almost nothing can be put right now in britain without doing two things one withdrawing from the european union and re-establishing our government's right to run our country as it suits the people of this country and not uh, bureaucrats and bankers many many miles away and secondly, we have to rebuild manufacturing in this country. It suffered a catastrophic decline under the Labour Party, which has simply been imposing conservative policies and with their globalisation dogma, wiping out vast sections of British industry. We are convinced that you can only have a decent high tax take, that you can only have stable communities, that you can only give families a chance to be independent and look after themselves if you have serious productive industry making goods which the rest of the world needs. Now, in addition to the points which actually deal directly with the economy, there's many points in other areas which touch on that. We've worked everything through the prism of sorting out this country's broken economic base. So if, for example, you look at the section on crime on page 48, time to get tough with crime and criminals, the last two sections of that, the last two points, are introduce physical labour into the prison service in return for remission for good conduct. To this extent, there are numerous areas where electronically tagged physical labour is required. Two immediate areas include the urgent reconstruction of sea defences and secondly, the placement of fibre optic cabling in the rural community. These facilities provided by the prison service will provide a welcome source of revenue. So everything we've done, we've tried to look at, we've tried to join it up. So the things that we need to do, the things we promise to do to make Britain a better place in all sorts of ways will most of all work towards strengthening and giving us an effective economic base because without that there's very little that can be done. We envisage doing this, we laid out in various ways, funded first of all by cuts. Three billion pounds saving on the Afghan war. According to Migration Watch, the real cost of immigration to Britain is 13 billion a year. That would stop. £18 billion in the hidden climate change levy on ordinary consumers' electricity bills. That would stop. £9 billion on foreign aid. That would be diverted from going into the bank accounts of third world dictators into actually doing useful things for this country and for countries overseas. £15 billion is the estimated direct cost of our membership of the European Union. Half a, million, half a billion on ID cards. That makes a total of 58.5 billion, plus the savings on the bureaucrats, the Quangos. As an example, we're committed in here to abolishing the utterly useless Regional Development Agency, which costs £2.3 billion a year. There's many other fields which we would also be cutting the bureaucracy and the Quangos. The Tories believe they can save 10 million that way. The Lib Dems believe they can save 15 billion that way. Because we would also be cutting the politically correct Quangos, we believe we can save 30 billion. This gives us a pot to do things with of 85 billion pounds worth of savings as opposed to the Tories 10 billion, without cutting any frontline services which actually need to be there. Additionally, we'd fund it with what is now established through what's been done with quantitative easing that has finally confirms that our analysis of the banking system, the nationalist analysis, which is fundamentally wrong, fundamentally corrupt, because it's been creating wealth, money out of nothing, credit out of nothing, and then charging us for the benefit of having our own money supply, that doesn't have to be. We would go in for a 
form of nationalist quantitative easing, producing the money that's needed, not to rebuild the bank balances of corrupt banks, which got into that mess through their own incompetence. We are not interested in them. We would use a form of quantitative easing primarily and first of all to fund a full-scale program to create a new generation of safe, British-designed, British-built nuclear power stations, because without that being done very quickly, the lights are going to start going out. And a safe, really effective nuclear industry is one of the examples of what this country could and should do with our skills base, with our inventiveness, uh, with our industrial reputation and record. We could do that and create products which we wanted around the world. That's the kind of way in which Britain can pay her way in the world. <clears throat> there are many, many more things in the manifesto, but in brief, it's comprehensive, it's realistic, it's popular, it's all online at bmp.org.uk, and we hope that the media will cover it fairly. Frankly, if you don't, we're not particularly fussed, because we don't need you anymore. Our website is more popular than all the other parties of Britain put together. We get a huge hit rate of serious people coming to see what we see, say directly instead of viewing it through the murky lenses imposed by the National Union of Journalists. So we ask for fair treatment. We don't expect kid gloves.